will actually map it out. Okay, here we go. We'll actually map it out. If you notice over here, we have statement. Oops. So over here we have statement dot execute query. Remember it said execute star. Whenever there is execute star, it should come down this path. So it's going to come down this path and it will say, okay, statement, where is statement? It is connect con dot create statement. Remember again it said statement plus. So whenever there is a subclass, in this case the subclass statement is being executed and an execute method is being executed, so it is going to actually call this piece of code. Okay, let's go back to our dynamic SQL. Here we actually see that when this is called, what should happen? Well, before that, we are, we are, oops, we are going to actually use log for j to actually write that into a log file. Okay. As simple as that, we are going to say dynamic equal n and then there is this uh, syntax, forget about the syntax for now, the syntax is going to say what line number, what class is actually being called. So let's go ahead and click play and now see this in action itself. So here we are going to load up uh, Daffodil CRM, but as we are doing it, first we are also going to show you the log file that it is going to write to is completely empty. And here we log in with, uh, you know, very secure password, admin, admin, log in into the system. And then look on the right hand side, there's an export feature, we are going to click it. And of course CRM is very secure, it, it, it's prompting us for password again, you know, transaction based authentication. And it actually tries to push the Excel file to us. Note, whenever this Excel file is push down to us, we know that that piece of code has been executed. Let's go back to our log file and see what has happened. You can see that actually it is written. Warning, dynamic SQL in class, line number 107. Let's go ahead and look at line number 107 in our piece of code. So we're going to go ahead and open Eclipse. Again, go to our line number 107 and try to see what is on line number 107. Um, over here we are on line number 84, we are going to take down a few <coughs> lines. And look, line number 107 actually does not have anything. It is commented out. What's going on over here? Is that program wrong? Well, let's go back to our log file and look at what it is saying. The other thing it said was, Excel creator and not which file are we in? Export Excel.java. So what we're going to do is we, we thought that primarily the call was coming in from a different file. But Excel creator is the one that is calling line number seven where the actual SQL, dynamic SQL is being executed. Okay? So though we thought that originally the vulnerability was in a different file that was export Excel. Behind the scenes, Excel Creator was the one which is calling the dynamic SQL. Now we, with aspects, we did two things. One, we have created this generic template. Now you can actually use with all your pieces of code. Just add this in and it's going to look at every single occurrence of dynamic SQL. What line number you can do that now. Okay. And what is actually calling it? You can see that as well. Now, you can come back to me and say, well, that's fine and dandy. Could I not just, you know, un unjar the file uh, or unzip the file and then run jag on it and grab for it and do the same thing? <coughs> yes, you can, but here this is so much faster and you can actually see it at runtime which ones you need to work on fixing rather than fixing every single thing. As you all know, I'm sure you have encountered that you have hundreds of bugs or you know hundreds of applications with a few bugs in each of them and how do you fix every single bug. This would be the, one of the easiest ways to figure out which is higher priority as opposed to just fixing everything. Any questions on this?
just before that, one major key that Nish had pointed out is when you run an application, you might be importing a whole bunch of libraries. And you might not know what's going on in those libraries, right? There are a whole bunch of jar files, and they might be executing dynamic SQL, and you have no idea. So this is a great way for you to actually see what's happening. Yeah? So, so Eclipse is this is just an IDE, right? You can you can use any application server and use uh, Aspect J, and so uh, we could be running WebSphere or WebLogic, and it'd be writing to a log file. So what we're doing here is we're checking a log file, but we could print a console if we wanted to, we could import it into a database if we wanted to, we could do whatever we want. We have that flexibility with Aspects. That's an excellent question. So, uh, we would like to see it from about from the from kind of the bottom up scenario. Uh, most people kind of take offense to the idea that they can't act, create the application themselves properly with OOP. Um, that's kind of where we are right now. I think in the industry, we're not having a lot of people create it from the ground up, but it makes a lot of sense to create it that way. Um, with legacy code, it's really hard to change a lot of times existing code. So this way we can do it and we can take it out very easily. That's what that's kind of where the business case comes from. <laughs> it's a little annoying. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, I guess some of the other things that we'll talk about are Aspect J. Well, uh, as as Rohit was mentioning, Aspect J has been around for 11 years and is one of the most popular. Actually, it is the most popular uh, AOP implementation in Java. Um, AOP.NET. I think someone was talking about .NET. I think you were talking about .NET. AOP.NET is trying to implement, or it has implemented, the same style of weaving technique in C# -sharp by Microsoft. Now, of course, there are uh, techniques like that are used with Spring AOP, which is the proxy-based approach. The same technique has been used inside .NET by other implementers, but nothing like what Microsoft is doing, which is pretty interesting. It has been actually uh, led by a professor out in Russia um, that started all this effort, and it, it is something that I would recommend looking at for sure. And then there is Aspect C, C++ available as well. What do you guys think we could do with Aspect C, C++? Stop all buffer overflows. Whoa! You guys really think we could stop all buffer overflows with that? Well, think about it. I mean, you can, at least for our hacker, I mean, security friends who are researchers, could actually start doing fuzzing on one side, and with aspects, every time there is an occurrence of star copy, star length, with values inside it write to a flat file or a log file somewhere, right? Now suddenly, instead of always having a runtime environment, having a debugger attached to it, and what have you, and constantly monitoring to figure out the stack, it would be much easier, it would be much easier if we did it just with aspects, right? Please close the door. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's not going to happen. So aspects, another thing that we can think of is from a defense standpoint for buffer overflow. Think about all the times where we have functions that don't check the length of the input coming in, right? That is a fundamental cause of a lot of our buffer overflow issues. Well, now we can create aspects to check the length before the function actually executes, all right? So maybe not stop all buffer overflows, but certainly go a long way to securing a lot of legacy apps that didn't have those controls built in in the first place. I would like to add a caveat that this is something that we are starting to research on. We have not yet done hands-on a lot of research. Hopefully we will be releasing some papers or talking about that as well soon. Uh, but that is something of interest.